It's a sunny Friday here in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, and we're coming to you live from our studios at Ibran TV. Welcome to another edition of the Arena. It is the Friday edition, the last for the week apparently, and definitely there's so much to look forward to when it comes to sporting actions across the weekend. I'm Samson Oloide. Now let's delve into the thick of things as quickly as possible. Yesterday night we saw action from the Premier League down to the Europa League as well as the Europa League Conference, and definitely we'll be addressing all of this, starting with the Premier League. And Chelsea Football Club, just hours after the UK government announced sanctions on its owner, Roman Abramovich, with the implication being that Chelsea is also frozen in terms of his assets, Chelsea were able to record a 3-1 win over Norwich City to ensure that they consolidated on their third spot when it comes to the Premier League standings. And that's quite a commendable achievement for them, considering the distractions of regards to um, the off-field issues battling that the club is battling with at this point in time. Trevor Chabaloa got a goal and um, the scoring for them, um, opened the scoring and beg your pardon for them with, within three minutes of the match. And you also have Mason Mount getting the second while um, Kai Havertz got the third goal. So for Chelsea, a comfortable 3-1 win it was while Timo Puki scored the only goal for Norwich City. For Norwich City, is as good as signed, sealed and delivered when it comes to being relegated. From the Premier League as they are still battling, the Canaries as they are known, are still battling to survive Premier League status, though it's looking gloom as um, the days roll by. But for Chelsea Football Club, you have to give it to them in terms of the concentration on the field of play, they were able to get the job done. Now let's talk about Chelsea Football Club with regards to the uncertainties regarding the club itself. Remember I said that um, the owner, Roman Abramovich, has been sanctioned by the UK government alongside seven other oligarchs that have close ties to the Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin. And for Roman Abramovich, um, his assets have been frozen, including his homes, the Berkshire home, which is at £4 million. You also have the one um, in um, other parts of London as well frozen. So the UK government has now stated that the club will have a special license to meet obligations in terms of fulfilling fixtures as well as paying of staff. Um, it's the, as a result of the sanctions, the ticket holders will also be able to go to games due to the special license that the club will be offered. But club can't sell new tickets. In other words, um, aside those who have bought existing tickets and, and um, you know, season ticket holders, um, other fans won't be able to purchase um, tickets when it comes to Chelsea football clubs matches both home and away. You also have um, Abramovich facing a travel ban. Um, he won't be able to come into the UK and um, he's also facing transactional ban. In other words, um, individuals or companies won't be able to deal with him in terms of, you know, um, business transactions. Now, that's also worrisome because it affects Chelsea Football Club, although that considerations regards the possible sale of the club um, in terms of um, Abramovich selling the club without receiving any fund at all and that looks really 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 dicey at this point in time considering that he, he has decided to donate the net sale uh, the net proceeds from the sale of the club to the victims of war in ukraine but telling a man to sell his club that he values at three billion pounds without receiving a penny of it it looks really really dicey but these are the implications or the trickle down effect regards Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Aside that, um, all other things being equal, Abramovich is also one of the seven people who have been sanctioned, the oligarchs who have been sanctioned by UK government. And as a result of the sanctions, that's a whooping 19.7 billion pounds that has been frozen by the UK government um, when you talk about the estimates from the seven other oligarchs as well in terms of personal assets. That's quite a lot. Now you have Evra's which is a Russian steel industry um, company um, that that's Roman Abramovich has a 29% stake in. That company has also been frozen by the UK government. This is even as the UK, the United States, and all other allies are piling the pressure on those who have close ties to the Russian president in terms of you know tougher sanctions due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, for Chelsea Football Club, um, there are also limits to what they can do. They can't sell players at this point in time. They cannot buy as well. And what it means is for players whose contract runs out at the end of the season, like influential club captain Cesar Aspilicueta, there will be no renewal of contract. You also have Antonio Rudiger, who has been in phenomenal form for Chelsea over the course of this season. He will also have to leave on a free as Chelsea can't sell or renew contracts 
or even by players as a way as a result of this sanction. Um, you also have Chelsea um, being restricted to certain amounts they can spend when it comes to prosecuting you know, um, football matches. £20,000, they cannot exceed £20,000 per game, per team, when it comes to their various teams, be it the men's team or the national team. Chelsea cannot also exceed £500,000 when it comes to fixtures, home fixtures, per team. And all of these are just um, as a result of the issues ongoing with the club. The government is also open to considering a further addition to the special license which will allow the sale of the club. But the condition is that Abramovich will receive no funds at all, just as I said earlier. And that has to take place within the next 81 days. It's really, really uncertain times at Stamford Bridge and no one knows um, how this will pan out. The players are not even sure when it comes to their wages. Chelsea has a wage bill of roughly £28 million a week. And um, it, it shows you, you know, um, how much the cost is in terms of um, the sanctions. And um, they will not be able to buy and sell players, as I said earlier. New contracts as well will not be able to be negotiated as a result of this. And um, the fallout of these sanctions is that Chelsea's shared sponsor, which is the telecommunications giant 3, have also requested to temporarily suspend their deal with the club. So do not be surprised if you see Chelsea Football Club playing subsequent matches without the number 3 in front of their shirt jersey. It's just as a result of these sanctions that have been imposed. And for the players, the fate of certain players are not yet known, but I'm sure in the coming days and weeks and months, there will be clarity regards the various uncertainties that have bedeviled Chelsea Football Club as a result of its owner, Roman Abramovich, being sanctioned by the UK government following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, let's still talk about, um, let's delve back into, you know, action, um, field, um, action on the field of play, I beg your pardon. And that regards yesterday's matches. We're still reviewing matches this time around. Let's talk about Newcastle United. Yes, it seems something is right with the club I mean, over the last six, seven weeks. Um, at the already the club manager is doing something right this time around. Away at, um, from home, it was at Southampton, and they were able to register a 2-1 win over um, against Southampton. It was quite impressive. It must be said they considered um, the goal for, um, a goal first, and um, Chris Wood was able to get his goal for them, his maiden goal for Newcastle United, as they pulled level. And shortly after, um, they were able to get a 2-1 um, a, a the lead. You know, courtesy of a new boy as well, Gramerez, who signed from Olympic Lyon. So, 2-1 win. Um, and that win has boosted Newcastle United to 31 points on the Premier League standings and they're 14th when it comes to the Premier League table as well. Remember, the myth is that you need to amass 40 points to guarantee safety when it comes to Premier League football. So Newcastle United are just 9 points away from amassing 40 points in the Premier League to be able to ensure that they stay in the Premier League for yet another season now let's talk about um leicester city against runs that's the french side um it was the europa league tie the first leg and um, at the king's Park stadium it was leicester city who progressed or rather won by two goals to nil and our own kelechi in was able to get the second goal late into the dying minutes of the game as um, leicester city were able to run out comfortable two win um, two nil winners on the night over the role um, in terms of performance you get a feeling that it's well deserved and it's something that um, definitely Leicester City can build on going into the second leg against runs which would take place within the next week or so so um, for Leicester City it's quite an impressive run remember they've been struggling of recent in terms of having a consistent run of form in terms of stringing wins but this time around despite the loss of um, joint top scorer Jimmy Vardy they're still able to get the job done and you have to give them kudos for what they've done when it comes to, you know, the ability to um, get through. Olympic Leon shareholders, Path and IDG Capital have confirmed they're exploring the possibility of selling their stakes in the French football club. The pair have appointed Machand Group, uh, Machand Bank rather, Rain Group to manage the potential sale to the highest bidder. Film production company Pathy holds a 19.36% share in the league on club, while investment firm IDG owns a 19.85% stake as well. Lyon's president, Jean Michel Aulas, owns 29.7% of the club through his honest holding company, while the remaining 33.07% of capital belongs to other investors. The news comes amid a slump in Lyon's finances. The club's most recent financial report of the 2020-2021 season 
showed that the club's revenue fell to 177.4 million euros, a 35% drop, um, drop compared to the previous year.